back in October 2022, I stumbled upon this video by Eduardo. He's a really, really good lady artist. And so, once I saw that video, I knew that I had to find a way to recreate it, which is exactly what I did. I spent 11 days making this video, and here was my end result. <laughs> Except for YouTube, of course. Oh, hell. A lot of people were asking me to explain how I created my version, and that is exactly what I'll be doing in this video. Hello, my name is Alam Video Mari. I'm a video editor, visual effects artist, a video artist from Lagos, Nigeria. Let's get straight to this crap. Yeah, so we're on the PC. Um, this is my first time doing this kind of a setup, like recording my screen and also filming through my webcam. So. The first thing you're going to want to have to do is, you know, film yourself, record the clips that you want to use for this transition, just like I have done here. For the second step, you're going to need to 3D scan the scene where you have filmed yourself, the scene where you intend on doing this effect. And to scan this scene, what I used was an app on my iPhone called Polycam. I think it's also available for Android devices and yeah, there are two ways to scan a scene. You can either use LiDAR which is a specific feature for certain iPhones or you can use the photo mode which would like you record a video and it will be taking photos of your scene that it would use to recreate it in 3D but my iPhone which is the base iPhone 11 did not have LiDAR so I was forced to use you know the normal mode like most other phones have to use and it was very hard to process it I had to tweak my settings a lot but I found out that using medium settings and um, object masking turned off, I was able to eventually get a good result. Yeah, and by using photo mode and seeing the result I got, I knew that I couldn't use this as my 3D scene because it wouldn't look good at all. At that point, I decided that I was going to have to recreate the scene in 3D. So basically, I have to model stuff, look for models I can use, you know, just to recreate the entire scene. So let's move over into Blender so I can try and break it down to you. So. As you can see, this is um, the 3D scan I got from Polycam. You export it in GLB format. It should come into Blender like this with its textures. And as you can see, this is unusable. Like, this is really bad. Really, really bad. So, in a nutshell, what I did was that I used this to get an idea of how I would recreate the scene in 3D. So, you just start off, create the floor, create a plane. If you don't know how to create stuff in Blender, I'm not going to start teaching you that from scratch. That's stuff you should know how to do. You can enter edit mode, uh, select one edge, move it on one side, extrude it on the Z axis, you know, do different things, extrude this on the Z axis. I'll look for a, um, an architectural visualization video that can help you with this. So I modeled what I could model. I modeled, uh, let me look for my original scene. So let me turn the roof off. I modeled what I could model. I did the walls. As you can see, I did the walls. I textured them. I did this um, side dividing thing. I modeled it. I set it up. And I shared with the work I did. I did this. I modeled this pillar stuff by hand. So I didn't only use the reference thing. I used the reference to guide me with it. I used the reference. If I should turn this off, you see the reference. I used the reference to guide me with it. In certain scenarios where I could not model stuff, like I didn't model this TV, I didn't model the chair, I I modeled this table lamp actually, I'm proud of myself. I modeled it. I didn't so I didn't model this dining stuff, all these things, I didn't model them. I didn't model the, the curtains, I didn't model this, I didn't model this. Because if I had to do that, this video would have taken me way longer. So what I did to help me with these things was that I used this add-on for Blender called, what's the name? It's here, you see here. It's called Blender Kit. So I could come here and I could search for sofa. And you turn it on here. Search for sofa, search for it. And you can see 
um, that it will show you, you know, models that people have put up for you to use in your projects. There are some that you have to buy, but then you can find a bunch of free stuff to use as well. And so I could just select this blue one and it will download it in my scene. Okay. And boom, I have it there. It's blue the texture soon. I have it there. And as you can see, I have the sofa in my scene. But I don't need that in my scene. So that's basically what I did. I modeled the assets that I could model and I used Blender kits for the remaining things that I could not model or would have taken me too long. Also, I used Blender Kit to help me with the texture. Like this texture on the wall, right? I, it's a texture from Blender Kit. So, you know, it's just a matter of being creative with what you do. Like, you know, using Vetter's texture data by, you know, you can set certain parts of a certain model to have a particular type of texture and you can set other parts to have another type of texture. All these things are the basics of building and you know, working with objects in your scene in Blender. I'm not going to teach you all these things from scratch. You need to already know the basics of Blender. This is not me teaching you the basics of Blender. I also forgot to mention there were some rare occasions where Blender kits didn't have what I needed and I had to use um, Sketchfab. I used this, I got this particular material from Sketchfab. I'm mean, sorry, this particular model from Sketchfab. And also forgetting to mention that I have a friend, Oyedeji, he's an architectural visualization artist and he also helps me out with like this thing on the roof. He helps him with identifying a lot of these things and you know, I was grateful to him for that and just assisted me overall. He shout out to him. Okay, so if you're back here, I'm going to assume two things. Either you're just watching this video to understand the process, or you've actually taken the time, follow the links I provided, and utilize them to create your scene. Okay, so now the next phase is to create yourself as a 3D model. You don't have to necessarily create yourself as a model. Like the one I drew inspiration from, he didn't create himself as a model. He just, you know, created a random character, made it look cool, and used that. But I decided to use myself because I felt it would, you know, look cooler. Creating myself as a character, I use this software known as Real Illusion Character Creator 3. So basically, I took a photo of my face. I explained this process in one of my other tutorials. But I'll provide a link to how you can do it because I don't want to waste too much time. This isn't a free software, by the way, but it works well. It's actually, you have to buy it. Luckily, just as I was recording this, a friend of mine told me of another way you could actually turn yourself into a 3D model like this. The only problem is that you won't have, you know, as much detail as this. But since you're far from the camera in the video, it doesn't really matter. And I doubt if you'll be able to do stuff like animating the eyes and mouth. But basically, it's an online web platform that you, you take photos of yourself, you upload it, and you can turn yourself into a 3D character and use their outfits and stuff like that. I'll pro also provide a link to that. And so let's just say that you either used this using the tutorial that I provided for you to learn how to turn yourself into a 3D model using Real Illusion Character Creator 3 or you use the other alternative that my friend told me about if you use this and you export it out it will come with a 3D with a model rig okay I also provide you to a link to a tutorial that can help you with importing Character Creator 3 models into Blender properly alright so let's just say you use that you use this character creator 3 method it will come with a rig and you can animate it by hand since it's a simple animation it shouldn't be so hard but let's say you're using this other method sorry i didn't quickly confirm that the second method actually rigs the character for you so all you have to do is animate it so let's say you're using the second method it's already rigged for you and all you have to do as well is to bring it into blender and you animate it you know make the 3d model act as you need it to act but since it already comes with an outfit you might not need to create one or simulate it so depending on which method you use if you're using this character creator 3 method you might need to create an outfit for the character and simulate it which could make it look cooler using marvelous designer and i'll provide a link to a tutorial that helps you with simulating outfits i'll also provide the link to the store where i got the free outfits for my character from okay then the other last method you could use is a free character from adobe mixamo all right you can go to adobe mixamo use your google account signing 
download any of their characters and it will come with a rig and you can automatically you can animate it by hand in blender or if you want or you can use this free floating pre-made animation if you don't know how to animate characters or if it's too stressful but you animating it will give you more control and you can make it look as cool as you want it to look so that is entirely down to you okay now coming back here just to show you and to finalize the character part as you can see here right this is the rig for my character like this is what i use to animate the character basically floating and all of that and as you can see i also use marvelous designer for my own clothes simulation so like i said I'll, i provided you links in the description to help you with these things with the you know knowing how to put outfits on characters and simulating them all right and um, also just make sure that the position matches your position from where you jumped in the air and then animates from that point out it's pretty simple it's just uh, it's not that hard using whether i use a mixamo rig or you use avatron.me or i don't know you just use a pre-made animation from mixamo that's it so now getting ready to move on to the next phase okay so for this next part it's going to be rather uh, detailed so for this part i'm going to cover you know the effects i did on the character like this is just basically me finishing the character if you probably used a mixamo character or an average character you don't have to bother with things like watches or depends you might want to it depends on how if you want to style your character further but i don't know i feel you wouldn't need to anymore you will probably have shoes and stuff like that like i got these shoes from sketchfab hold on let them load let them cook let me... so yeah i got these shoes from sketchfab all right and i you know just edited it like made it match my character the character's foot size and stuff like that mirrored it put it on the other leg simple stuff then i got this watch i got this watch from uh from blender kit let me turn it on as you can see it right here you know you place it on the character you parent it to the character there should be an object constraint on it i'm not sure if i used an object constraint but Okay, it turns out that I use a surface deform and I set the targets to the 3D model so it follows and deforms the model. It's not perfect but I've already gone too far into the projects to find a fix for it. But this is how it follows the character. Then the next thing I did I got was glasses. I also edited it a lot to make it match the character texture the properly. As you can see there even glitches at this point but you may notice it um, yeah if i put this on cycles you see that you can actually see through the glasses oh it's pretty here so let's go back to what you want so yeah glasses watch shoes all right but well, all those things apart so the next thing that I did for my character was the hair. So I'm going to link a hair grooming tutorial down below. But just in case you're curious, I did it in different batches because obviously the top my the top of my hair is higher than the sides since my hair is faded. So you can see the way my hair is, and I'm going to show you the settings that I used here for the hair particles. You see everything here. So the settings are used. You can pause them and check it. And stuff like that. These are all the settings I use for my hair. You know, it's just basically experimenting till you get what you like, right? And since my hair is very short and um, and you know stiff, I use I turned off all the. You know effects the field effects because there are some effects in this scene like i use the wind effect i use the uh a turbulence effect for the particles i did on the hand to make the particles sort of like twist and react differently to make it look cool and i didn't want any of those effects messing with my hair because my hair can't in real life it wouldn't act like that so 
I disabled all the effects on it, affecting it in the scene. Probably if you had longer, silky, soft air, you could uh, enable some of this and experiment with them, like reduce the wind, not make it too much, all that cool stuff. But I didn't have the hair for that. So, yeah, this is practically all the settings I used. Know that for hair, you will use a vertex group for where you want the hair to show on. All these things I'm talking about will be explained to you in the tutorial. So, let me not waste too much time on that. If and if you already have a character that has like hair and all that stuff, you can move forward so you don't waste time on that right so just basically watch a tutorial on how you can grow the kind of hair that you have i right, search you to grow then um, i also did my beard hair as you can see here same thing if i switch to render mode it look a lot different it's really hard to render as you can see, when my head looks really nice. So, yeah. Now, if we take out the hair just so that my computer reacts faster, if we take out the hair. The next thing I did was the particles on the hand and legs also. As you can see, what, all I just basically did for these particles, I'll also provide you a tutorial to help you with simulating particles. I can start teaching you how to simulate particles from scratch. So basically, I created a, what's this thing called? An icosphere, right? This is it down here. I just enabled it. This is it down here. So I just disabled it, turned it off. You know, don't let it show your scene. Then you go back to the character, right? And all I then do is to go into. Oh my god, I don't want to show the naked parts of the character. All I just do it now is to go into edit mode. And if you go to the vertex data, I'm sorry, you have to do all these things. You would see that I can select these things. Like if I select the vertex groups I created, basically they are like parts of the body that I highlighted and put in the group so that I could use them for the particle simulations. I could tell Blender that this is where I want the particles to come out to come out from. So this is uh these are the vertex groups I created. I, I created different ones just to get different results. And if we go out of edit mode and then we go into the particle settings right here, you see that Obviously, this way I'm navigating through. You would see that I could show you the settings that I used. These are the settings that I used for my uh, particle settings. Oh, my head might be covering it. Sorry about that. Let me move it over to this side. Okay. These are the settings that I used. If you probably, if I covered up the one for my hair, the hair one isn't really important. All you just need is a tutorial and experiment with the different settings. So don't bother too much about it. So these are like the settings that I use for the particles on um, on my hand. You can see them here. You can try to copy what I used for the particle settings. I will show everything to you. Everything is grayed out because of um, because of I already beat the simulation so that Blender doesn't have to like render the simulation all the time from scratch. So this is basically the settings that I used for the particle simulations. And you can see that I, I also, you know, took the settings. I'm using the vortex and I'm also using turbulence. I turned off the wind because I'm using wind in my scene to do a cloth simulation. And the wind is very, very strong. So I disabled the wind so that the particles only react to the vortex and the turbulence in my scene. You can see the other settings there. Yeah, these are the settings I used for for the particles in my hand. I'll also show you the settings I used for the uh, turbulence and the vortex in my scene. If we should come here, you will see the settings that I used. I created the turbulence. I used the settings. I also created a vortex. And I use the settings. I'm probably wondering how do I add a vortex or a turbulence to my scenes. All you do is press Shift A, and you go to Shift A. You go to first field, and you see them there. You see the vortex, turbulence, and the vortex. And all you just have to do is to 
you know, use the settings that I use and experiment. It's basically just experimenting to get a look that you like. So turbulence, vortex, and yeah. So that was how I did the particle, particles, uh, the particles that are coming out. I also did them on the shoes. They're still loading in. I also did them on the shoes. Where is it? Yeah. So if you look at the shoe particles, you see the settings that I used. Everything is already open. You know. Yeah. Same. Practically the same settings for both legs. You can just do it on like one leg, and you can copy the modifier from one leg to the other leg, right? Just basically select one leg, select the one that has the effects, then select the other one you want to move into. Then you go to objects, link transfer data, select copy modifiers, and it's copy the modifier from the first leg to the other leg. Just you know basic stuff. So that's how I did the particles on the characters, arms, and leg and shoes. And yeah, also yeah, before I forget, it's the same thing I did. I also selected a vertex group for where I want the particles to come out from. So this is where the particles are coming out from. I said I created a group for the faces on the base of the shoe. So that's basically what I did. Then the glasses, the watch, the watch and the hair, all that stuff. And yeah, I think your character is practically ready at that point. Let's move on to the next phase. Now this next phase is actually um it's actually subjective it's a matter of what you want to do what you feel is cool right so let me put it in solid mode so i have a faster preview you can see what's going on in my scene <laughs> So yeah, you can see all the crazy stuff that's going in my scene. You can see the curtains flying, and then the chair, the furniture in the scene is starting to take off at a certain point. And you can notice that everything is interacting. There's a simulation. There's a clip simulation going here, and it's interacting with the chair. They are just there's, and you know, everything is just interacting, and it's just like you know, detailing to make the scene look cooler. I like. This extra thing, you can avoid doing it, but I just wanted to do it because I felt like it will make my own stand out and be really cool overall. So basically now, all I just did was that your scene might not have curtains, so it's complete. it depends on your own scene. Like this, right? So, okay, let me break it down like this. So, let me find um, my wind controllers in my scene, right? Okay, so... So you can see all the wind controllers I have in my scene. Oh, I like them like this. I have about one, two, three, four, five, six. And these are the uh, settings I used. Some of them are lower, some of them are higher. I think this is most likely the most powerful one. And like I keep frame the intensity over time so that the curtain wouldn't be staying up the entire time. It's just going high, it goes down, goes higher, goes down, goes higher. Uh, up until the timeline ends, you know, that kind of stuff. These are the settings I use. They're just, it's just one page like this. This is the second one I use, which is here. You know, it's different intensities that I set for them. Actually, these ones are like the same, but this first one is the most powerful fan in the scene. I believe most powerful wind controller in the scene, right? So, for the curtains, it's just a simple clothes simulation. If you don't know how to do a clothes and a wind simulation, I'll link tutorials down below so you can go watch that. It's pretty simple to an extent. You just basically do this. You just make this. All I all I did here is, was that I made this top part. If you check, if you check it right, if I enter edit mode right, and I go to the vert vertex data, and you see it here, curtain hold. I select it. You notice that this part. It's been highlighted so this part is not simulating or everything that is not highlighted is being simulated so this part is holding the curtain up and this remaining part is the one that will react to the wind 
So that's what I basically did for all of the curtains. I also tweaked how much the wind is being affected in the in the clothes settings. So it's just a matter of like being creative. Just in case you wanted to know, these are the settings I used for the clothes simulation on the curtain. You can see here, you know, just basic stuff. Most of them will probably be the same. The start and the end of the simulation, I baked it so that I don't have to load it all the time. The curtain hold, which is the pin group, the part of the simulation that is not being affected by the simulation, it, it, will, stay, it will stay in place, but everything will be simulated and then collisions and stuff like that. So now, you can see this chair, right? Good. I want to show you something. This chair right here is very detailed, as you can see which is not bad but when you're doing clothes simulation like this something with this amount of detail will slow down your simulation a lot more so what i did was it's a pretty simple trick that most 3d artists know how to do i created a block like i modeled a simpler block out of the shape of the chair something that's similar to the shape of the chair but not as detailed as the chair so that I can have a faster simulation because there's way lesser detail on this and so as this thing is going up this is what is actually reacting with the curtain not the chair and so that way it's faster I, uh, this creates the illusion that although I think I should have uh, pushed this place down a bit but I didn't notice it because there was a lot to do on this project but it still worked out and the camera was not focused on it so you wouldn't really be able to tell but this is this technique saves a lot of time which when you're trying to bake your simulation and stuff like that and if i should turn all the other ones on you'll notice that all of them have simulation blocks to speed up the process this this has one this has one this has one just simple stuff so i'm going to turn all of this off right now that was how i did the like curtain simulation all right then i also did the i select this chain now you notice that it's still then once the keyframe gets here it starts floating up slightly then it goes up even more you know i did the same thing for the pillows just animating the different things in the scene up although this this ones these pillows are being parented to the chair but it's loosely parented it's like 0.94 influence so all these are just simple stuff once you create your scene and this is the advantage of actually recreating your scene in blender over using the 3d scan because you have all these parts being separated into different pieces and you have total control over how they are being animated and how they can be moved you know stuff like that so it's a lot stressful but it's more flexible you have more control over the scene so i didn't want to make everything float up like this once i just left them there even though it doesn't make sense i didn't care i just left it there because i felt it looked cool so that's just most of the basic tweaks i did to make the scene more immersive i also spent a bit of time doing a simulation a simulation for this guy right here if you notice it's dangling to uh, and it's reacting to it was reacting to the wind in the scene or i baked the simulation so you can't really see the settings i use i used a rigid body simulation because i didn't want to use any other technique that would give me too much stress to finish the video so i just quickly used a chain of you know rigid body i attached them to each other and i attached it to this paper lantern and i let it react to the wind and that's just basically how it's stuff i'll also put a link to rigid body simulations if you're interested in learning that i think i did the same thing i just duplicated it and i brought it here too for this guy i just put it in the right direction you know the direction i made it face the side that this person will face it you know pretty cool stuff like that so that's like the basics for the cool stuff i did you know to make the scenes look cooler all right so the next thing i did now to make this simple that was uh, the fly around subjects the butterflies the jellyfish all these things so i got this butterfly from sketchfab credit to this guy and i quickly you know learned how to rig it and then you notice that the butterfly is actually animated i wanted the butterfly to show more so when the camera angle like if i go into my camera angle right you'll notice that when the camera starts the butterfly is not really visible 
but when it gets here you can see the butterfly then if you come out of the camera you notice that once that place goes out of, goes out of frame the, i quickly animated the butterfly to come over here so that when you go back into the camera when the camera goes around you can see the butterfly again you know i just wanted the things to show but not draw too much attention like you can see them i i put them i, I took an extra effort to put them in the scene and you can see them but they're not taking all the attention away and you have the one on the roof that was there throughout and you also have another butterfly that is like at this corner here so just you know i just brought the butterflies in i animated it then i played around with the animation speed of most of most of them you know i made it i tried to out to alternate or to randomize their animation speed i made some random tweaks to the keyframes so their their wings move at different paces and it's not like you know everything is moving the same way there's also another butterfly here then the jellyfish at the starting point i didn't want them to show at the start of the video because it would be too distracting so you'll notice that the jellyfish do not actually show until the camera comes around the first time then i scale them in and this is credits for where i got the jellyfish from then i scale the jellyfish into the scene you come in like this okay and they follow their respective curved parts this one follows this part and this one follows this other part and they scale in and they are, it was already pre-animated so all i just did was to keyframe the you know it's moving on the path and that's it for the creatures that i put in the scene honestly the guy no the original one like creatures what edward of put was like spiders and sharks but spiders are too spooky and i know my family members coming to ask me why i put spiders in the living room in my vfx videos that was my reason for choosing butterflies and jellyfish then the last thing i did i hope it doesn't crash my blender because this version of blender crashes whenever I try to play um, movie sequences as planes. I don't know if you get what I mean, but basically what I did was I added glitching overlays to the scene. And the only way you can see, let me turn off this creature so that you're not too distracted. The only way you can see this is if I should put it in texture mode, all right? So in material mode. So if I put it in this mode, you, and once it loads, okay, I hope it doesn't crash my stuff. You'll notice the first one on the ground here. If I go back into solid mode, this is it. I go back into material mode, this is it. They are like pre-made glitch overlays that I just imported into. I imported them into Blender as a plane. Like, you know, you can just create a plane, create a mesh plane, all right, GZ. And then you go into your shading tab. Once you're in your shading tab, you can just, you know, create a new material for that plane. And then you just, uh, you just shift a select for and image texture bring that in attach it to the color and then you can open this and attach and put any video that you want to show on this and it to show there like i can look for one of my edits over here okay i can use this video now which is like my first ever blender render okay I just put like 500 frames auto refresh cyclic go back to the layout it should play yeah as you can see i have my first ever blender render here on an image texture so this is just basically how i burst it into the scene so every glitching overlay you see in the scene i brought it in as using that method and i just arranged it around my scene and you know, you just preview it and see how it's playing and make sure that it is matching the way you want it to play and stuff like that. So that's basically how I added, you know, the glitching overlays to the scene, scattered them around and tried to make it look cool. And I think that covers it for making the scene look cool overall. Yeah, I'll provide links for wind simulation, float simulation. You should know how to keyframe and animate objects in Blender. I'm not going to teach you that from scratch. You can, I can take something that's not animated in this scene like this. I can go to the start of my scene. I can press I and I'll insert the location. And then I can move to like 200 seconds. I can move this up, press I again and insert location. And you notice that it's a move off. So you should know how to 
anime stuff. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so the next phase is going to be the lighting and the camera animation. I would say the lighting is based on your taste and what you like, but I'll break down what I think the lighting and I'll also show you the setup for my camera animation. So, this is going to be slow to preview, but let me turn the roof back on. I would love to turn on the hairs and stuff like that, but it will make my render slower. So, I have my uh, lighting, my scene lighting is not even on. So, because this is like a 360 camera movement that I did. So making the lighting look good from every single angle, right? And also making the character stand out from the background, you know, whilst also making it look good from every angle, making the character look good from every angle, whilst also standing out from the background and letting the scene have depth was a very, very huge challenge. I got help from my friend for this in the early phases, trying to know which colors to combine. Another tricky thing was that because the walls were pink, it made it really hard for me to just choose whatever lights I wanted to use. The pink wall made it hard for me. So after a lot of hours of struggling, because if you look here, I have different lighting versions. I have version 1, version 2, I have a final. This version 1 alone has like 3 different versions I was experimenting with. So it was really hard for me to end up with a lighting that I liked. So of course, first of all, I made sure that my world was like dark dark. I just made it like a dark blue shade, very dark blue shade, and I gave it a strength of 0.15. So there's barely any lighting coming from the world. There's no HDRI, there's nothing. So I came up with this really cool idea to use this pillar right here as a source of light. So what I did for that was that all I just did was I entered edit mode. Let's go into solid. I entered edit mode. Let's select the faces. So I used this face here, right? I I set it up as a separate vertex. I set it up in a separate vertex, and I you know created a separate material for it. So if you go into the shading tab, this is a separate material for this. This is material 008. This is material 005. This is material 006. So the main material is material 006. And the rest on it are just like different materials that I, you know, separated from it. And I added an emission effect to it to make it glow and emit light. Let's exit from edit mode and emit light onto my character. So sort of like acting as my key light in the scene. As you can see, if I were to show you the difference, well, my you see that the light will be completely gone. So that's just basically what I did there in a nutshell. The next thing I did was to add lights to my scene. So I'm going to turn everything off and show you all the lights progressively. So let me turn on the scene lighting. Now the first light in my scene is this door light. I just got this good idea to create a cube, right? And make it an emission layer and make it blue. You know, the colors are like creative choices, you know, trying to combine complementary colors. Whatever you feel fits your scene, use it. I'm not going to tell you how to color the lighting on your scene. So I said to, I came up with a genius idea. There wasn't a light here before, but I just came up with a genius idea to use this door opening because this door wasn't open at the start. I didn't want it to be sudden. I wanted a bit of light coming from it, right, at the start. That's why I didn't close it completely. So as the video progresses, as the animation progresses, it's fully open, right? So that's acting as a very strong backlight. Okay, then the second main light in the scene is this red cube. I added another red cube to the window. You know, I just wanted some lights, some creative colors in my scene. Light spinning in from here, light spinning. You know, the main backlight, you have some red lights spinning in from the left to sort of contrast with that blue light. Then the next light in my scene is this orange paper lamp light I put in here. I'm just breaking down what I did to you. Just like I did with this pillar, just like I did with this pillar, I decided to make the windows pane 
Then it's purple. I know it doesn't make sense, but I spent so many hours on the lighting that I nearly lost my mind. So don't judge me for what you see here. So this was complementing this purple coming for you just to make sure that there's something going on in this angle. There has to be something going on in all four corners. Then this right here, the next light is this. I added a bit of a blue light to assist this light right here with the backlight on the character. Okay. Then the last light in my scene, this is bad boy right here. I love the position of this light. It's like this very powerful red light that's just coming out from all color of the scene and it's just splashing all over the place. And so it's like it's just you know transitioning from red to orange to purple and it's just yeah if you're wondering oh i'm new how do i create light in the scene it's very simple you press shift a you go to light and most of the lights i used were point lights and yeah bring that up and yeah you have a light you can come to the light settings and you can set the power you want you can use like i don't know maybe 10,000 watts depending on how bright you want it to make your scene let's just go with 1000 and you can deal with the radius which just determines how soft the light would be you know the more you expand it to try to soften the light instead of it being very harsh like this so it's just like how you know you diffuse your light that's just basically how it works so that's how you create lights that you can change the color to green blue whatever you want so yeah for the camera animation it's very, what i did was very simple right uh, there's there are so many lines going on in this scene right now, so let me just uh, turn these lights off. Right? I don't want to see them in the scene. So now, if you see what's going on right here, right? You have you have uh, what's it called? I created an empty. Okay, so if you're probably wondering what how to create an empty, an empty you create an empty by you know you go to Shift A, go to empty, create an empty, G Z. Put it wherever you want to put the empty in your scene, okay? So, I created an empty, I named it camera rotation. So, I put this empty where my character is. I just put it around the center point where I knew my character was going to be, okay? Then, I created my camera, okay? This is my main camera. Let's go back to the start of the animation. This is my main camera. I tried to angle it the same way that my shot in the real life video was and then i parented it to this camera rotation and then what i basically did was that i made this camera rotate the camera sorry i made this empty to rotate the camera around the subject so let's move this up so you can see it i made this empty you know rotate the camera around the subject so if you notice something this empty is controlling and rotating the camera, but you can still animate the camera irrespective of what the empty is doing to the camera. So, if you want to know, understand what I'm talking about, as the empty is rotating the camera, the camera is pushing in and out as it's being rotated. Because if you notice here, let me turn the roof off, as the camera is coming from this angle, right? This thing, it's going to get clipped by these things here. So I animated the camera to move closer to the subject when it got when it got to that point. It moves closer to the subject, and as it's coming around, it's starting to pull away from the subject since there's enough space for that. So it's pulling away from the subject, and you know it's turning downwards, and it pulls closer again, and then pulls further away. And yeah, that's just practically it. Just be creative with how you want your camera animation to be. I spent four hours on this camera animation, tweaking a lot of keyframes on the camera itself, on the empty that is rotating the camera. And I also used another thing to try and fix an issue with when my camera was, you know, passing through objects, but it's not necessary. That's just using, see, I don't know how to explain it. It's pretty complex, but so in this camera animation towards the end there was something i did to make it like sort of like cooler whereby i basically made the the perspective the focal length of the camera i was originally using 26 mm which is similar to my iphone's you know field of view or focal length whatever it's called so towards the end just to make it more immersive i animated the field of view 
from this point down to the end of the animation i made it go from 26 down to 16 so if you notice the camera goes really 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 wide just to show more of the scene and also the camera is pushing in towards the end so i use that to sort of create this effect that the character was sort of like expanding because using a wide, a wide field of view like that makes things that are close to the camera look bigger than they actually are so that was one more creative like hack I used to make the ending feel really really cool. Come to think about it, I did a lot of things in this video. So rotate it around the camera and do whatever you feel is creative for you to do. Keyframe it. I spent a lot of time tweaking the keyframes, you know, dragging some handles up and down. Let me show you the uh, the graph editor, dragging a lot of angles up and down, you know, easing things in and out just normal creative stuff Go. to make it I, I practically synced the camera animation to the music in my timeline so yeah yeah so like the final part in blender once you've done everything you've seen that you need to do you've uh, built your scene you've sorted out your character you've brought it in you've animated it do close simulations if you need to do close simulations add anything you need to add shoes or anything which is accessories to your taste and liking and do the particle simulations if you want to you do not have to you've done that you move on to the environment try and make it cooler if you want to like uh, animating stuff around making stuff float it depends on what you want to achieve in your own version and once you've done all of that you um, deal with your lighting you do your camera animation however you want to do your camera animation it's all your own creative decisions and you've done all of that so you're finally ready to render out from blender take it into after effects link it up transition well and bring out your panda video so basically these are the render settings i used in um blender so i use i'm using the cycle renderer with uh 256 samples max these are the settings i used this is the noise threshold that i used this is the denoising de settings that i used okay so this is practically all of the settings that i used for my scene i'm going to show everything to you and it will vary your pc might not be strong enough to handle so this scene i don't know but yeah I'll throw my PC specs up on the screen. This is everything I did. Okay, so my settings. Okay, so there you go. These are my settings. And I rendered out, this was how long it took me to render out. I think it was an average of like 1 minute 25 seconds to a minute and 30 seconds average. It could be longer than that sometimes and it's usually as low as 1 minute 25 seconds and for 607 frames and you multiply that it took me about over 15 hours to render out this animation from blender so i also forgot to mention 1080p resolution 100 percent resolution um 60 fps and i render out in pngs in a png sequence zero percent compression a color depth of 8 bits yeah i'll see you now in adobe after effects yo so now i'm back in adobe after effects and this is my timeline right now <laughs> quickly break this down all you have here is the intro for the video right good so you have the clips that are being randomly cut off right here as you can see and you just have a simple scale out effect for this you know just to make you feel cool I, I scaled out to the beat let's go like so that's what the scale out here is for okay I zoomed in then I scaled out on the beat and so you have the transition point right good 
I did a simple, uh, I'll show you the layers right here. This first one is a glow and a blur. So just the blur and a glow. You know, go from zero to a certain amount that you feel is fine. And goes down to zero again. Okay. Then you have um, for this you have a warp transition. I'll leave a tutorial down below for a warp transition. Here I just basically did see. It doesn't have to be exactly my, like mine. You can do it however you want to do. But I'll provide a tutorial. Basically a warp transition. I used a scaling effect because I was trying to match it to this video very well. It's not perfectly aligned, so I just scaled in camera pushed in i applied a chic effect you know and in an rgb chromatic aberration effect all these things are just creative tastes you can do them however you want to do and also a turbulence displacement i'll leave a tutorial down below for how to do a turbulence displacement transition i'll leave a link down below actually so on the other end just like the same thing where you make it go from you know from the high values to the low values and as you turn it off you notice that uh which is boring so you turn it back on that's cooler and smoother i spent quite an amount of time experimenting and trying to get a look that i want so yeah and then the other things i did was just uh another chic I zoomed in, then did a shake, then I did a blur to sort of do like, you know, like when you zoom in and then shake, you know, your camera is going to refocus. I just try to recreate that effect to try and make the camera sort of like refocus and to shake to the beat. If you hear it, yeah, so just a subtle shake with blurs to make it look cool. Then I did another shake with switch and also blurs to make it look cool then i did a transition here which is using twitch and shakes and glow as well just gl doing glitchy effects trying to transition out from the clip into the phone screen now let's break down this phone screen for this phone screen all i have here is a video clip right of my hand okay so i cut out my hand and i put it in front you can notice my hand is cut out as you can see here okay then i composited my i created i used the 3d model in element 3d let's go into that scene setup into that scene setup try to show you what i did i'm not going to teach you all the screens from things from scratch because all these things alone can take like tens of minutes to 20 minutes there about a standalone tutorial so i you know did it textured it made the screen added the screen texture the separate layer put that in then i applied some effects like the color matcher the light wrap i also added some noise because when you record videos they are not perfect they will have noise so i first of all applied a color matcher which is basically me using the original video layer you know the color matcher is from the details on the original video layer so i applied the color matcher to try to match it more to the purplish color of the background then i applied the light wrap wasn't that effective but i just applied it like that and made it subtle and i applied a noise and this is the settings i use for the noise just to add more detail to it so that it doesn't look like too shiny and perfect and yeah that's basically it i just did it with the camera i zoomed out of the screen you know did some blow cool blow effects and since i had the uh the hand in front of the background i could apply a separate blow to the background you know to add more depth of field to it and then the camera sort of like goes back into the screen and i already pre-made it that if i go into the screen composition that element 3d is using to show the screen i made it that it shows this you know some text effects and an overlay i put in the background and then I fade in the start of the video clip again okay so that transitions back in goes back into the screen and then if you come to the start of the original edit you notice that I sort of like did a an optics compensation and glow this optics compensation I used it to distort 
the perspective to make it seem as if you are moving into the screen so it just sort of like comes in to create a perfect loop you know and the glaze is sort of like signify that you are changing since you're moving from a darker scene to a much brighter scene you know through the phone screen so yeah, so that's practically it. If you didn't understand anything, let me know in the comment section down below. I did my best to break it down as much as I could. I can't teach you every single thing from scratch. This tutorial is more of like an intermediate level tutorial. So you have to know these things and know your way around them to be able to do it as this is a rather complex video to pull off. Thus why a lot of people like the video. I mean, it's my most popular video to date. So, Thank you very much for watching. Peace. I'm so tired. It's almost five years. Even when I'm at my fucking show, I keep on talking.